recording. Let's get those background lights on. Looks much better. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today in a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to do masking so much easier than any other way I've taught you before. Let's get into it. I absolutely love adding effects inside my edit. Masking is one of those things that you can do it really good or really bad and it's gonna be noticed. Well, today inside DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna show you guys how to do an easy mask with auto masking. So I have three clips laid out. I've got one shot from the A7S III, I've got one shot from the iPhone using cinematic mode, and then I've also got one shot from the iPhone as well, but in ProRes. Now this effect will work with any camera you have. I just wanted to have multiple options so we can see how it's working. So I'm gonna be focusing on the ProRes file shot from the iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, because I really like the 4K, I like the resolution of it, but I want to add some of that blurriness to it. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna duplicate this clip. I'm gonna hold Option on the Mac and I'm gonna bring it up above it. You can also right click on it, you could hit Copy, you could go here and you could hit Paste and it's gonna insert that clip, but I'm just doing a keyboard shortcut. We're gonna hop inside the color page, which is where we're gonna do pretty much everything about this effect in here. So we're gonna create our mask in the magic mask button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we have our eyedropper selected, the plus sign, you can see it right here. I'm just gonna draw kind of a line around this can, just like that. I'm gonna let it load, do its thing. If you do not see this red here, which however, I did pick a really bad subject to be using a red can and a red mask on top of it. This button right here will toggle mask overlay on and off. Uh, so what we can do is underneath here, now that we have our mask on, is we can go down here, we can start refining things. If your computer can handle it, switch over to better and you can automatically see right here that it's starting to bring that mask in. If I click it back to faster, you can see that it's spilling around this. So I'm gonna leave this on better. I'm also going to add just a little bit of denoise, not a whole lot. I'm gonna smart refine it a little bit more to about 60, let it do its thing. I think that looks pretty good. Then we're gonna go right here and we are going to track this mask. We don't wanna hit play up here, we wanna hit it right here. I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna let the computer do its thing. Now I have a MacBook Pro M1 Max, uh, very specced out, so it burns through this pretty fast. However, if you have a computer that's not as fast, it is gonna take a little bit of time for it to render this out. It can do it, but it may take a little bit longer. Like this is already done, so that's fantastic. Now we need to add an alpha output, otherwise you're not gonna see this mask show up on anything. Of course, nothing happened because we have these layers stacked. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the second layer and in here, we're gonna do the blur tab. I wanna add a little bit of blur, so I'm gonna bring the blur radius up just a little bit, not too much, so it doesn't start to do that weird blur vignetting that iPhones tend to do. Just a little bit, we want it to look natural, but we want it to pop a little bit, and I actually think that looks pretty good. Something else I really like to do is go into the curves, and I like to make sure I'm still on the second clip, and I like to do just a little curve, just so the can will punch out just a little bit more, something like that. Now for some of you guys, you may not be able to do this because I cannot remember off the top of my head if the studio version has this or if it's the free version as well. Back in the color tab, I'm gonna click on the second clip. I'm gonna go to the blur and I am going to reset that so there's no blur in there. I'm gonna go back to the edit page and I'm actually gonna grab the lens blur from the open effects panel. I'm gonna drop that onto our second clip and in here, I can start messing with under effects I can really start to mess with the blur and I feel like the blur in this one is a little bit more realistic than the blur that's done in the color page. And in here we can also stretch it to make it a little more anamorphic. Uh, we could mess with a few of the details just to make it pop a little more. A pro tip is if you're trying to make it go unnoticed, I would be very cautious on the blur and if you're gonna make color pop somewhere else because it really is going to be very noticeable. An example, as you can see, this microphone is in the same focus field as the can and it's not in focus. 
If we switch over to the FX3, you can see when the camera's moving that that microphone is actually still a little bit in focus. However, this is a really cool trick to know and you could use this in many applications. Whatever you're wanting to do, I recommend playing around with the auto mask and see if it makes your life that much easier. That's all for me today, guys. I hope you learned something with masking inside DaVinci Resolve. If you're new here, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below, subscribe if you have not already. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.